Hi guys, my name is Sam Cheney. I'm a senior applications engineer here with Geomagic and today I wanted to talk to you about sheet metal applications inside Geomagic DesignX for our RE Lab presentation. Now the model we're going to be looking at is, is shared here. Uh, we're going to start with scan data and then design it in DesignX verify its accuracy and eventually get it into SOLIDWORKS, which is you know, ultimately what we're trying to achieve with pretty much most reverse engineering uh, we do in DesignX. You know, it's not finishing in DesignX in most cases. It actually just needs to go to SOLIDWORKS or Inventor or, or whatever CAD package you, uh, you have made a drawing and actually get it into some kind of manufacturable format. So let's take a look at the model in DesignX. So we start off with a scan and um, one of the difficulties with working with sheet metal in particular is that it's so thin, right? It doesn't have too much of a thickness and it, it can, depending on how, uh, how thick the gauge of the metal is, it can warp, you know, even, even under its own weight. So if you, you know, flipped it upside down, um, the, the bend angle or, or the, the weight of the metal actually might uh, cause it to distort. So you might get some misalignment when you're working with multiple scans. So to avoid all that, we just took a scan of uh, one face, uh, essentially just the, the top surface, and we can kind of get some of the thickness here. Um, you know, if we spend a little bit more time or like I said, did a, a second scan, we might be able to get a, a more accurate measurement of that. But you know, nine times out of 10, we could just take a pair of calipers to the, the gauge of the metal, check the, the gauge sheet, and we, we can get the thickness much, much more accurately than, uh, than trying to rely on, on scan data. So uh, this is a great scan for this. Uh, we've got a few bends, a couple of, uh, of holes and everything. And uh, what I really like about this model, I, uh, I didn't actually model it myself. I'm using somebody else's, but uh, my first tip and uh, compliments to the chef on this model is they've actually gone through their feature tree and added some logical uh, spots to add notes so you can kind of see where each step in the model uh, is uh, is separated with with these little notes uh, i think they use points but you can even just come in and uh, and rename a sketch or a feature if you want to as well just by clicking on it like that so they started with a sketch and then if they, if I move down to show the extrusion you can see they extruded a really large uh, section here uh, and this is just covering this top surface you can you know verify that yep it's uh, it's within tolerance but then obviously we have some uh, some red areas here and I was wondering what happened with it well if I turn the model off it's to capture this this these two additional bends uh, where it's kind of stair stepping down or ramping down. Um, so I just made sure that that extrusion was actually just uh, gone as far down as it needs to. And you know we don't necessarily need it to go all that that distance down, but more is uh, is always better than uh, than less. So after that, they if I move down, they then added some some fillets. Uh, you know, typically you might add these towards the end, but um, you can also add them uh, at the beginning here if you uh, if you need to. Then they worked onto the flange. So if I roll forward, you can see they they added a sketch here to really just determine the angle at which this this flange has been bent. Uh, they made it a 3D sketch so that they can then extrude it this way. Um, and again, quick accuracy verification using the accuracy analyzer is always useful. Um, with sheet metal, you know, if you have a, a little bit of deviation, you know, most of the model is is within tolerance, it's green, but then you've got some uh, some deviation either up or down, um, just in a, a particular corner. Again, we're the engineers in control in this. It doesn't necessarily mean the the model's wrong you know if the the physical part may be bent or it might have got uh overbroke or something like that so uh again being the the people in charge being the ones uh deciding if if the parts with intolerance or not uh is uh, is you know we can review that and decide if it's something that we should adjust or if we can keep keep going so 
lot of modeling on the outside. Uh, after that, they then move on to, if I move it forward, they uh, do a sketch here. And what I particularly like, uh, what I find really useful, especially with sheet metal application uh, parts, is the silhouette range. So rather than trying to just, uh, if I go back, uh, to just take a single like slice, it's very difficult to get uh, a, a good cross section right on this edge. Um, so it's really useful to capture the whole area by using the silhouette range. So just essentially extending it a little bit and then you get the whole profile just like that. Uh, so it's a really, really useful tool in this particular application of sheet metal. Okay, turn my solids back on and we then extrude another body so at this point we've got three different solid bodies we've got uh, our first sketch which kind of defi defines the the top surface our um, our next feature that defines this angle and then finally the this one which will be used as a as a boolean to uh, to cut this area uh, out of this second piece uh, second solid body we created earlier so after you've created all those three, you then do a Boolean cut. And this is basically just going to def uh, change the shape of that second, uh, second solid body. Come in and add some fillets. Again, you can add this at the end or add it at the beginning uh, or as you, you go. It's kind of personal preference. Uh, then do another Boolean. And unlike this one, where we were cutting one away from the other, uh, this other one is just to to merge everything together. So now we have one solid body, but it still doesn't necessarily look exactly like our, uh, our surface body, right? It's uh, it's way thicker, um, and this is where they get um, some some a bit more ingenious uh, stuff comes into play. Uh, if I turn the mesh back on and move down our feature tree a little bit, uh, the next do is create a surface uh, and this is going to essentially just be cut away from that solid body so you can turn the surface off and there you go you have uh, you've defined that that step there really nicely a few more fillets and uh, this this step here the shell step i think is uh, is really interesting and uh, i, I Definitely a, a good take home tip if you're working with any kind of surface model. Uh, sorry, if you're working with any kind of uh, sheet metal part, uh, the way that they modeled this is they modeled, you know, all of the outside. And then rather than just extruding it, however, uh, you know, however much thickness um, it needs to be when you're trying to get you know, the thickness of this side and just a constant thickness in the entire model, um, what what you can do instead of just extruding it, you know, if it's, uh, I don't know, half inch or quarter inch sheet metal or, or whatever gauge, you know, extruding it a quarter inch or half inch or whatever, actually just over extruding it, uh, making it look, you know, very blocky like we see here, and then doing a shell command. So you can set the depth, you know, in this case, it'd be the, uh, the thickness of the sheet metal that you want, and then just remove all of the outside faces. So just keeping these, these top surfaces here, and it's essentially just going to do a uh, like an offset surface. You know, also what you could have done uh, alternatively is if you wanted to, instead of doing the shell, you could, if you had uh, DesignX Pro, you could use the, uh... here, let's get this Teams controller out of the way. There we go. Uh, you could come to the model tab and do an offset surface and then offset all of these by whatever thickness uh, need be. Let's give it three millimeters and the other way. And then you just, uh, then you just ex uh, extend it, you know, make it uh, cut the entire surface uh, and then cut it away that way. Um, the reason we didn't do it that way. The reason we did the, the shell command instead of um, the offset surface is because when you're moving, uh, you're getting sheet metal parts into SolidWorks, um, there sometimes can be um, some more gremlins with the uh, surface tool live transferring over to SolidWorks than 
uh, you know, something like a shell operation. So um, the shell operation, live transfers, SolidWorks, no problem. Uh, and you don't have to mess with any of the, the surface editing tools inside SolidWorks. It just, it just transfers over really, really well. So um, that's why we did it this way. And then uh, at the very end, they just added in the, the remaining holes. Again, quick check of the accuracy analyzer, make sure it's good. It is. Um, and at which point we're finished with our model inside uh, inside DesignX. Now, just because we're finished with it inside DesignX doesn't mean that we're done. We'll typically then either, you know, if you're if you're just uh, needing the the solid body, you could save it as a step file, or what you can do is live transfer it to SolidWorks. And once you get it into SolidWorks, all that was left uh, to do once it's in is just come and use the uh, convert to sheet metal tool. So this is where it's going to look at all the bends that we've added uh, and add them in. And once it's converted to sheet metal, you can actually unfold it and and create a uh, a flat pattern. So you can then you know send that to your laser cutter or make make a a, a design uh, sorry a drawing file for it, uh, and then you can actually get it into manufacture. So uh, so that's yeah, start to finish reverse engineering sheet metal. Um, there are some particular challenges around working with a sheet metal part, uh, mainly due to the the fact that it's so thin uh, and it can warp a little bit more than than other parts. Uh, you kind of also see this kind of um, these problems with the the scanning or at least the acquisition of the data uh, with things like uh, thin wall plastic parts and injection molded parts. Uh, and things like that anywhere that you have a very thin surface that can potentially deform uh, either in, under its own weight or just from manipulating between scan to scan. So yeah, pretty interesting application uh, of designing with uh, with sheet metal parts. Um, and yeah, like I said, even if you uh, if you don't want to take multiple scans, you can just grab a, a caliper measurement there. But yeah, that was the the reverse engineering workflow today focused on sheet metal. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and, uh, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.